powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your Thursday. I'm Janelle Slade. Governor Steve Bullock tours one of the state's COVID-19 hot zones and calls for Montanans to continue to stay at home. Now, the governor starting his press conference today after returning from Toole County, where there are 18 confirmed COVID-19 cases, including three deaths. Bullock addressing the hard, difficult work being done there. Q2's Russ Riesinger has more now on what else the governor and his team had to say. Well, earlier this week, we reported some encouraging news that the number of deaths and hospital beds needed here in Montana was not expected to be as great as originally feared. That was based on a model that the White House uses to make those projections. Well, the very next day, Governor Bullock extended the stay at home order for two more weeks. Today, he defended that, and he also said it's important not to rely solely on those models. And I understand it's easy to turn to modeling, especially the ones that give us that most optimistic look as uh, we all search for answers and a better understanding of, of this virus, how long it may last and how much worse it could get. So I certainly want to open back up non-essential businesses and operations as soon as we can. I want us to be able to celebrate the lives that we've saved together with our healthcare workers, rather than just howling for our healthcare heroes from our doorsteps each night. The strength of one's model is dependent on the understanding of the science of the current situation. And with COVID-19, a lot is still unknown or only partially known. The second part of modeling is that modeling does not predict the future. It helps us describe possibilities of what could happen depending on what interventions we implement today. The governor says he wants to reopen things as soon as he can, but a lot of that depends on us and we need to continue to social distance. He also talked about the struggle to get supplies here. He says that remains a concern and he joked that he's put out a directive to make the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy essential workers. In Billings, I'm Russ Riesinger for MTN News. Janelle, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Russ. Now, Governor Bullock also stressing the importance of finding joy during this time with our families and our children. Well, the number of confirmed positive coronavirus tests here in Montana jumped another 22 as of 10 a.m. today. That number now at 354. That's up from yesterday's 332. Now, so far, the death count remains at six. Gallatin County, again seeing the biggest jump, has eight new confirmed cases, bringing its total to 128. Yellowstone County adds another four, that number now 52. Stillwater County reports its first case, a man in his 50s. The state says 157 people have recovered from the disease so far. Well, tonight we get a better understanding of what those sickened with COVID-19 go through. This after two local patients were recently sent home from the hospital after battling those complications. Q2's Andrea Lutz reports. Health professionals are giving us a better understanding of how COVID-19 can impact those in our community. They would say that it's the worst, it's a combination of the worst cold and worst influenza they've ever had. Nancy Iverson specializes in infectious disease at Billings Clinic. She spoke with me about how patients she meets with are faring with the virus. And then it's a cough. And when I've talked with people on the phone, they sound like they have a bad cold. And they sound like it's many people that it's in their chest. She says the virus affects the lungs and people's ability to get oxygen, but that a cough can be prolonged because of the damage done by the virus. Many patients are able to go home. They're very tired. That's another complaint we're seeing is they're extremely tired and they sleep a lot. But there's this. Patients in our community are experiencing a mild to moderate version of the disease, meaning many don't need hospitalization. Yet symptoms can change and quickly. Typically, if you get a cold, it maybe doesn't keep you from getting on an airplane. It maybe doesn't keep you from going to, you know, events, weddings, birthday parties, funerals, all of which we're reading have been transmitting COVID to other people. And unfortunately, some people acquire this viral infection and, and don't do well and get very critically ill and have died. And that's tragic. Other people are experiencing it differently. 
Recently, a Billings Clinic patient returned home after being hospitalized and placed on a ventilator. Another at St. Vincent also recently went home after spending a week in the hospital. I don't think I know we know yet how it's going to come into our community. Um, it's here. We're learning to live with it. We've had members of our community very ill, very ill. Um, we know we've lost six Montanans who died from this virus. So I think it's balancing the seriousness of it um, and, and how it affects certain people. I think we have some control over how it plays out in our community. Iverson says perhaps the biggest takeaway for everyone, respecting the virus. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Thanks so much, Andrea. Now, the two patients Andrea mentioned in her story are among the 28 Montanans who've been hospitalized for COVID-19 since the start of the outbreak. Well, what does the outlook for Billings retailers says this coronavirus pandemic plays out? Well, that's a question on the minds of many business owners in this new world. Q2's Jay Cohn spoke with Billings retail developer Steve Corning today to get his perspective. How soon will the world of retail bounce back from the COVID-19 shutdown? No one knows for certain, but one thing local developer Steve Corning knows is no one is immune from the impact. I have never seen uh, a broader impact than what we're seeing right now, where literally everybody's affected. Um, you know, before I think some of these major downturns were maybe a little more concentrated in a particular sector like housing or mortgages, things like that. Uh -huh. But this is across the board. It's unprecedented. One of Corning's clients, REI, has put the brakes on its new billing store off Shiloh Road, postponing its opening and hirings for the time being. We're the developer of that building for them, and we've had to, you know, obviously compromise on, on beginning of rent and, uh, and start date. But... Uh, that's the world right now. We're making a lot of accommodations to a lot of people and they are to us. Corning says he's encountered a very cooperative spirit in the current business world, telling MTN, if we meet people halfway, we're generally met halfway in return. Among the hardest hit are movie theaters. I think people are worried. You know, we talked to our AMC theater tenant today at their home office and their concern is how soon will people come back to the movies? Will people react very quickly and say, gosh, we're so tired of being home and pent up that we need to go to the movies and get out and go to restaurants? Or are people going to be cautious? And I don't think people know. So as this pandemic drags on, the concern builds. How long will the social distancing and the shelter-in-place orders remain? In Corning's words, the longer this goes on, the more arduous the comeback will be. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. Thanks, Jay. Now to put the current economic slowdown in a different perspective, Corning says Montana right now has 300 unemployed workers for every coronavirus case in the state. Well, after 10 weeks and nearly 200 searchers were deployed, the case of a missing Great Falls woman has ended. MTN's Lindsay Hyatt has the details after investigators found the body of Amy Harding last night. On the night of January 26th, Cascade County Sheriff's Office responded to a disturbance call at the residence of Amy Harding Perman before she went missing more than two months ago. Harding was last seen walking from her house around 8.30 p.m. That night, deputies searched Buckshot Island, a region near her home, where they found personal items that led them to believe she was nearby. This is where we found some items. Uh, we found a name tag, uh, we found a uh, coffee card. Deputies also found a hole in the ice the next day that led them to focus their search efforts on the river. Sheriff Slaughter said they didn't disclose this to the public due to the nature of the case. We treat all these cases as if they're criminal from the beginning. If we publicly release that we found a hole in the ice, if we're interviewing people, and let's say that there was foul play involved, they're immediately going to point to the whole ice as the reason that she went missing. So I'm absolutely not going to release that for strategic reasons in our investigation. Now that Harding's body has been found and her family has been notified, Sheriff Slaughter encourages the community to take the final step in the case. I think now we need to pray for Amy, Amy's family, you know, and her, and her friends and her loved ones in this community, because quite honestly, a lot of people in this community mourned over this situation. So I think right now that's the appropriate thing is that, that people grieve and, and uh, go through their appropriate processes. 
In Great Falls, Lindsay Hyatt, MTN News. Harding's body has been taken to the state crime lab in Missoula to determine the cause of death. Well, the Carbon County Sheriff's Office has released the name of a man killed in a shooting south of Red Lodge yesterday. The victim is 43-year-old Chad Rockman of Billings. Sheriff Josh McQuillan says detectives are still investigating what led to that shooting. It happened a little after 10 Wednesday morning, about six miles south of Red Lodge. McQuillan says a woman was with the victim and another man and woman were there during the shooting. The sheriff could not say anything about a suspect but says all three are cooperating with investigators. Well, missing endangered person advisory has expired, but that's not stopping search crews from trucking across miles and miles in Paradise Valley looking for a missing 15 year old boy. Ress Wyndham was last seen in the immigrant area Tuesday evening around seven o'clock. Park County Sheriff Brad Bilcher clarifying today that MEPA alerts expire every 24 hours, but efforts to find Res are moving forward. In fact, his team, as well as more than 100 volunteers, continues that search tonight. Rez is described as five foot six inches tall, weighs 120 pounds with black hair, hazel eyes, and has freckles on his nose. Rez was last seen wearing a black hoodie with orange and blue flames, blue jeans, and possibly a black beanie cap. If you have any information, please call the Park County Sheriff's Office or 911. Well, the proposed Black Butte copper mine north of White Sulphur Springs achieved a major milestone today, and that could mean initial construction starting this year. But opponents of the mine in the Smith River drainage say they may challenge the permit approval in court. The State Department of Environmental Quality issued its record of decision for the mine, essentially approving Black Butte's operating permit with required environmental protections. Now, the mine would be underground with a 5,000 foot tunnel leading to the ore body. Jerry Zieg, vice president of exploration for the mining firm, says the three year construction could start as early as this summer. He says Sandfire Resources is already taking steps to protect water quality in the Smith River drainage. But Durf Johnson of the Montana Environmental Information Center says the mine threatens the iconic Smith River and that the state didn't properly analyze its impacts. He notes that Sandfire has acquired additional acreage nearby and ultimately wants to expand the project over many years. Johnson says his group will consider whether to take the DEQ to court over whether its analysis followed the state law. The mine, once operating, would employ about 240 people. Ahead on tonight's 530 News, a visit to the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch to share with you how Zoom communication is leading to better things for the kids there. Plus, a sweet drop-off from the Girl Scouts. It might surprise you how many cookie boxes are being donated to our local health care workers. Average temperatures for this time of the year are unofficial high up to 55 degrees today, right at the 30 year average, but we're still talking about that snowstorm for Easter. Details on that coming up. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.